name is uh, Jack Valotin. I'm come from uh, Switzerland, Lausanne, and uh, here. I know Scott Dyer. We are in the same uh, group, uh, patellofemoral surgery group. So I'm mostly involved in uh, knee surgery, and um, uh, today I will speak on the on the particular uh, subject. It is um, uh, not related to directly to the knee, but uh, you will see that uh, it's quite uh, uh, very important to understand also such kind of pathology like anterior knee pain syndromes, but it's not exactly where you cannot really find uh, uh, the cause or something in the knee or on the knee, uh, but uh, that, uh, that can also um, be... Um, that can, uh, so I, I speak about uh, anterior knee pain syndrome and uh, it uh, could be related to this, uh, to this uh, pathology. So this uh, functional allux limitus is a clinical entity that is uh, almost unknown, nevertheless so important in terms of uh, repartition of the constraints in the joints gait pattern, balance, and performance. Since I discovered this uh, clinical entity, I understand better several pathologic conditions. And um, functional allux limitus uh, forces to, to change our reference basis and uh, by this way, is constitute really a new paradigm. So, the definition of functional allux limitus is the inability of the first MP joint to come in extension at the push-off phase in gait. This uh, condition is related to the tenor disease effect of the flexor allucis longus tendon and uh, it's this uh, tenor disease effect is uh, located uh, mostly in the um, in the retrotalar uh, pulley uh, on the tract of this of this tendon to come in the anatomy you see here the the, the flexor uh, allucis uh, at all. Yeah, so this is the most posterior muscular structure in the leg. You see the insertion, it's the origin, it's at the, uh, on the fibula, and uh, the, the track then go down from superior to inferior lateral to medial posterior to anterior, and then pass uh, under the sustentaculum tali here to reach the distal phalanx there. On the tract, there is uh, several points where the, the, an impeachment can occur here at the posterior aspect of the talus and also here at the, 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 the notch of Henry. I don't know if you can focus the, the, the it's not very good. And here on the sesamoid uh, uh, at the, uh, under the, the first uh, MP joint. Thank you, yes, perfect. So the critical zone that caused the where is the tenodesis effect located is at the, uh, the, the posterior aspect of the, of the talus. And here you see uh, at this level we have two, like a, a, a bony groove in between the, the, the medial uh, um, talus tubercle and the lateral one. And this uh, gutter is covered by a pulley, a fibrous pulley, and you see here uh, where the, 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 the where is the muscular uh, tonnelus junction of this muscle and, uh, and where the conflict can, uh, can occur. So here a view, uh, a, a dis this section where you can see from, from, uh, from uh, distally here you see the, the calcaneus uh, groove, and then here you have the septalar joint and the, the bony groove and the, the, the fibrous pulley. 
So in human evolution, uh, we observe many changes and uh, uh, endurance running make uh, uh, the flexor allucis longus more powerful and bigger also. So that means that the belly of the muscle is uh, is uh, more and more developed. Was is more and more developed. The talus moves moved uh, more anteriorly. The ankle dorsiflex more, and uh, in parallel, the plantar flexion decreases. The feet have become longer, and all these um, these factors make the risk of uh, impeachment higher. Is why probably we observe this this condition more actually. The consequences. So the, the consequences uh, the, 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 the of the of the of the functional allux limitus is modified the synchronism in uh, in uh, in gait and creates a time lag. So that means that. Uh, the, the, the synchronization from to the f of the transition from pronation to supination is is uh, is displaced and delayed, and uh, that would change all the the the, 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 the um, in cascade all the the the, um, the function the, the, the function of the lower limb during gait and create and the implication are not only uh, uh, at the foot level but also the knee the hip the low back and so on and you will see that also by this by this uh, by this uh, modification of the synchronism the onset of the musculature of, of certain muscle will be also delayed so the post the, the posture it will be uh, dramatically modified by this condition to understand that, we have to um, we have to approach the problem on the dynamic view and not on the static one. So we have to 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 analyze the gait, and um, and uh, to 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 analyze this is not so complicated because of the synchronism in rotation. You see here that the lower limb is globally oriented in internal rotation in stance. So that's mean foot pronation related to tibial and femoral internal rotation. So both, both all of these are synchron. In the same time, also supination is uh, 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 related with the external tibial and femoral rotation. So the transition between this this for this uh, internal uh, orientation to external occurs at the push of faith, normally in gait. But with a functional allux limitus, it will not uh, occur at this time. It will be delayed by because of the prolonged and increased pronation in late stance and push off. And then, consequently, at heel strike, we will get an excessive supination and uh, uh, an increase impact forces. So you see, it changed completely the, the, the function of the, of the. Now, if we come back to the foot, the foot, uh, the foot stability is regulated by three auto support mechanisms: the windlass mechanism, the calcaneocuboidal uh, joint stability, and the compressive loading of the osteostructure by the locking wedge effect. So these three contribute to stabilize the foot during the, uh, the, 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 the step. And uh, for the windlass mechanism, you see that the allux dorsiflexion cause an arch rising simultaneous uh, with simultaneous lower leg external rotation. So that means that it's not only a problem in the sagittal plane is a really a problem, a three-dimensional plane with a rotation, external rotation in this case, induced by the windlass mechanism at push-off. And the normal dorsiflexion is the key for the windlass mechanism to work and is needed to uh, respect the synchronism in gait. So the functional allux limitus 
locked this windlass mechanism, so the windlass mechanism cannot be occur at the at the right time. So what what the consequence is is we w with a functional allux limited we work with a too long foot, like with fins. And it changed completely the posture. You see here on this uh, on this video what's happened. So the moment of flexion is in, is uh, increased in all in all body. You see, increased knee flexion, it increased uh, less uh, ankle dorsiflexion. More you see the, the 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 pelvic tilt anteriorly and the also the anterior projection of the of the upper body. So it will change completely, and over Dannenberg, uh, an American pediatrist, uh, told that, uh, called that the sagittal plane blockade, and uh, described also well the, 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 the effect on balance and gait. So the, the, this tenodesis effect on the flexor allocus longus tendon will lock the subtalar joint. The cord effect will lock the subtalar joint in, in slight varies, in, va in varies. And so the, the, the balance will be uh, less performant. And we see on the, on the static, this is a static podologic uh, footprint. And you see the, 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 the projection of the center of gravity is displaced posteriorly and laterally. You see also that there is uh, unload uh, first metatarsal head that is paratognomonic of this uh, of this uh, of the flexor allocus uh, of the functional allux limitus. So it will change and uh, destabilize the the, the 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 patient. Also, by this increase of the by this increased flexion moment, we have a cascade of uh, compensatory, uh, compensatory mechanism that, uh, to 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 compensate that, and especially at the hip level, with the pelvic tilt in during the stance phase. Um, this foot pronation increase in late stand will induce a medial collapse of the foot, and because of the synchronous, the knee and also the hip. And uh, the forefoot uh, over constraint leading then the effect of on the forefoot of this tenodesis effect will will uh, evolve uh, uh, will um, will um, give then after million and million cycles or a rigidus or an allux valgus depending on the shape of the forefoot. <coughs> so you see here on this uh, treadmill, the medial collapse of the knee in stance, you see the pronation, excessive pronation, and in the same time, the medial collapse of the knee, and then also you can see that the, the pelvic tilt is, is, uh, is, um, is present at the, uh, uh, due to that because of the external rotation in the same time, in the, in the, uh, due to the hypersupination at heel strike, you have this pelvic tilt, the contralateral pelvic tilt. You cannot see that very well, but here it was just to, 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 to see this medial collapse of the knee synchron with the hyperpronation. And um, this uh, make, uh, di this play an uh, important role for, uh, in the etiology, especially for anterior knee pain syndrome. So the functional allux limitus is a, is a common denominator to several pathologies. And um, uh, allux valgus and rigidus, so we will see that later, uh, tendinopathy, periostitis, stress fracture due to the impact forces increase at heel strike, ACL injuries in my, uh, in my uh, in my patient, I study that on uh, on 100 and 100 cases, and uh, in non-contact uh, uh, ACL lesion, we observe about 90, 90 more than 95 percent of cases with a functional allux limitus, that is a predisposing factor to this uh, to this uh, injury, and knee pain syndrome. Lumbar dysfunction, Dannenberg showed that very well, that there is a 
strict correlation between functional Alex limitus and low back pain and s different kind of pathology and so on. At the foot uh, level here, you see in this uh, study uh, what uh, uh, evaluate all this, all the, the different uh, way uh, that can explain why Alex valgus occurs. And, um, and uh, he, he to, 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 to make a theoretical uh, biomechanical perspective. And this, um, he, he which, um, which finding he, he found associated with the Alex valgus uh, uh, situation. So pronated foot, decreased ankle dorsiflexion, Alex limitus or rigidus, over pronation, feet laterally or internally rotate and overpronate to compensate the lack of dorsiflexion and um, grade two extension during gait, collapse of the medial con uh, longitudinal arch shift joint, uh, uh, shifts the joint axis of the first MP joint from horizontal to vertical. Wha and this is very important because uh, that will create degenerative changes on the joint. So what is the predisposing factor of all this finding is the functional allux limitus. Now, why some people have allux valgus and other allux rigidus? It depends of the, of the motion, the range of motion of the first MP joint and also uh, the, of the, 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 the ratio between the length of the first metatarsal and the second one. It will depend also of, of the, the natural laxity of the tissues and several, m several uh, others. And uh, then after, depending on the, on the shape, it will uh, done an, an alex valgus or an alex rigidus. Both can coexist also. And uh, depending especially on the, on the time of the onset of the alex valgus, the precocity of the, of the deformity will probably play a role and, uh, and uh, the, the, the degener degenerative changes are proportional to, to the precocity of the, of the onset. Now we come to, to, to clinical findings or to diagnose the, 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 the functional allux limitus. Here on this foot, you can see an hyperkeratosis on, on the distal phalanx, on the medial side of the distal phalanx. About no keratosis here, so that means that no load, that translates no load on the first uh, metatarsal head. And here on this shoe, you have here a wear on the lateral uh, aspect of the midfoot, and also here, you cannot see very well, but uh, especially here at the, at the lateral aspect of the heel, there is uh, an excessive wear. That's that's all these uh, all these uh, elements uh, gives a high degree of suspicion of functional allux limitus in this case. If you see a hyper extension of the IP joints, you can also be sure that that the, the we are uh, in in, uh, in in presence of a, a functional allux rigidus because it's the compensation, but it's not present in all cases. The podologic examina examination is also very, uh, uh, very uh, useful, and give uh, uh, the, uh, and you can also put the diagnosis on the basis of the of this footprint. This is the din dynamic footprint, and you see no load on the first metatarsal head, excessive load here on the on the on the distal phalanx look so exactly what we see just be just on the on the previous slide and um, and uh, so both are, are, are pathognomonic a specific test is used to put the diagnosis the diagnosis on, on the on the functional allux limitus and it's the flexor allucis longus stretch test. It, this test is, uh, is um, 
is uh, in three steps. So uh, the first step is first to assess the full range of motion of the first MP1 joint. So this, uh, I this, uh, this first step is done when the ankle is placed in slight uh, uh, plantar flexion. And we have just to, to, um, uh, to exclude a, a degenerative change in uh, Alex Rigidus, for instance. Then after by pushing under the metatarsal head, we place the, 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 the ankle in dorsal flexion and the third step is to push the first two backwards to get to, to come in, uh, in, uh, in extension uh, with the on the first MP joint. So it's normal to feel a resistance, but the toe has to, to, to be able to, disp to, to, to go in, in, in extension. So this test, it's important to perform this test really properly because uh, I was recently invited by the French Society of Foot and Ankle Surgery, and the, the uh, one of the 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 the, 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 um, the speakers uh, attributed the, the, this uh, this um, the, the functional allux uh, limitus to uh, a retracted plantar fascia, but it is not that, but. Uh, uh, because the, uh, the the clinical examination was done with less forces on the on the on the on the plantar aspect of the foot, so you can then uh, imagine different uh, etiology. But if you perform this test exactly like this with enough uh, force under the metatarsal head, so you 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 will be really reliable to put the diagnosis of uh, of. Um, of um, functional allux limitus. Here you can see on the video how we can uh, diagnose this, that, the, the, this, uh, this, uh, this functional allux limitus by a positive uh, uh, stretch test on the flexor allucis longus. What we found is that by mobilization uh, on the traction of the subtalar joint, the stretch tests become becomes negative in, in most of cases. And you can see here an example. So the, 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 the traction is done on the calcaneus, and by swaying movement, we free the, 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 the subtalar joint. Sometimes we feel a pop, or you can... <coughs> sometimes li listen a pop, and then the patient also feel that he, he regains his, the, the mobility of the hind foot in, in various valgus. And um, we call, we, we published that in the American uh, uh, Journal of uh, Podiatry in 2010, and we call this maneuver the Hoover Court Maneuver by analogy or uh, to what's happened when the cord of the vacuum cleaner is locked under a foot of a table, you can pull, you will deplace the table, but not to make glide the, the cord. And uh, you have to, to release the cord to be able to, 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 to make it glide. And, uh, and it's why we call this um, the, the Hoover cord maneuver. And you see here, you see again the, this, uh, this, uh, the pulley, the, the, the bony groove, the subtalar joint, the, the fibrous pulley, and here on the another specimen, and we dissect number of uh, feet, we, we found in, in uh, several specimens such men meniscoid um, uh, process uh, just at, at the in, in front of the subtalar joint, and probably by pulling on the calcaneus, so we just uh, put this, uh, this, this tissue inside of the joint, so that's enlarged the space and allowed the tendon to glide again. And then, by doing this, uh, this maneuver quite several times with stretching exercises, if the fibrous pulley is not so fibrous and not, not so tight, we can gradually make it a bit more elastic and get the, the a normal glide of the flexor allucis longus tendon. So we de design a, a, a conservative uh, protocol to manage the, the, um, 
this um, this this uh, clinical condition by mobilization, stretching exercises, core strengthening, global stretching, and um, and also sacroiliac and lumbar mobilization because of the postural uh, consequences at the lumbopelvic junction uh, due to this uh, to this condition. Specific orthotics has also designed to to the um, for for this. Uh, uh, problem, and uh, this is uh, to stabilize better the, the, the calcaneus during the, the, the stance, and to also to uh, create less constraints on the MP1 joint. Sorry. Now, in case of failure of the conservative management, we can, uh, uh, by surgical treatment, um, make a, a section of the of the of the pulley, just uh, uh, so the the the, the, the pulley uh, that's covered the the, the the tunnel, and uh, here you can see a, a scope view with the with the FHL tendon, the pulley, <coughs> and the section is done on the bone on the on the lateral side of the of the <coughs> of the tunnel and is completed by the resection of the posterior lateral tubercle if I, in case of a prominent tubercle of a, or presence of uh, of an os, an, uh, an os, uh, trigonum uh, bone so i perform already more than 500 uh, cases of this uh, uh, procedure without significant uh, complication we analyze uh, prospectively our, all our cases by uh, 2D analysis on the on the um, on the foot scan platform, and uh, we observe at so preoperatively and then three months postoperatively, and which we, we observe a modification of the load uh, repartition on the on the forefoot. We made also a 3D, 3D uh, gait analysis in collaboration with the biomechanic uh, department of the Polytechnic School in uh, Lausanne. And um, we measure with um, uh, electromyography, insertional sensors, and pressure insole in, in, in the synchronism what's happened pre and postoperatively in 20 patients. And um, we found that that is uh, re effectively a, a, uh, a, cha a change uh, of the repartition of the r of the pressure on the on the alux, and also that's changed the the, the, the condition of balance and the, um, uh, and uh, and uh, the the gait pattern. Last year in November. Uh, we organized the first international congress on this topic in Lausanne, and uh, uh, you can you come if you are interested. You can you can come on my uh, website to 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 watch the conferences, and that was done at this time. So conclusion. So the um, the. Functional allux limitus has to be considered as a factor implicated in uh, different types of pathology, and not only and also in uh, forefoot deformity. Careful examination is mandatory because uh, nobody will complain on the on this uh, inability to glide of the flexor allucis longus tendon, except in case of tennis and And uh, postural analysis has shown a remarkably uh, postoperative restoration of the functional anatomy of the forefoot, and uh, the, the surgical results are, are quite good. So <laughs> now we get some future steps to uh, new uh, 3D uh, evaluation, uh, pre and post operative, um, and to 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 we have uh, some uh, some different uh, research works uh, actually anatomically, uh, surgically, and also by MRI to see and to to be able to to show. Uh, the the um, 
the result of our surgery. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Thank you very much for a really interesting presentation. I've got a couple of questions. Uh, firstly, with regards to your conservative management of this condition, how many failed out to proceed on to surgical management? We we uh, about ninety percent uh, uh, doing well after conservative management. If it if it is done properly, yeah. And just that ten percent then that failed that you yes. proceed on or to surgery. Uh, Sometimes it's uh, it's a uh, it's a good result after the first series of uh, therapy, and then after we 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 have a recurrence of the of the problems, and it's why after we go for this for for surgery. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, secondly, is um, with regards to you said obviously because of this problem with the Halix limitus, you have overall alignment problems. Have you had any series where you've had anterior knee pain secondary to the limitus, and has it corrected following your treatment of the hallux limitus? Yes, we we have in these uh, 500 uh, surgical cases, 80 cases with uh, anterior knee pain syndrome, uh, without any uh, uh, lesion uh, or the lesion with 85 percent of uh, good or excellent results. I thank you for your lecture. Uh, I see some problems special uh, in a patient uh, who have combined problem with uh, tibialis posticus uh, dysfunction and flat foot and sometimes his diagnosis between uh, uh, dysfunction uh, with uh, a tendinitis of tibialis posticus and problem of uh, flexor halosis longus uh, very difficult and it's very difficult to say to the patient will be better or not after operation if you have mixed problem what do you think about that uh, and how how to help the the, the patient i think you see the, this condition of uh, the functional allux limitus will uh, will get to a flat foot deformity and uh, because uh, because the increased length of the of the foot and the the, the trend to uh, over constraints first the MP1 joint or the mid foot and then the rear foot so uh, that the the, the 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 evolution will be in in such in some kind of feet like this and uh, also in parallel when uh, we speak about heel pain or uh, plantar fascia then uh, insertionitis. You see th that is very close from the uh, flexor lucis longus tract. And uh, the, this, this tract is often painful at the notch of Henry that is exactly located at the same point than the insertion of the plantar fascia. And the plantar fascia is, uh, in most of cases, not really in involved in the, in the pain process. It is the, the tendonitis of the, of the flexor allucis longus because there is a sheet al around the, the tendon uh, at, this, at, at, at this level and uh, during the night, for instance, there is no uh, circulation of the liquid and then by this thesis, it's, it's painful. And uh, uh, so that leads to, it's not exactly the answer to your question, but the the, the here there is uh, some misunderstanding on on different uh, etiology of the pain at this level now after for the when when the, when the it uh, a flex, um, uh, posterior uh, uh, tibialis uh, tendonitis occur so it's another problem so it's already uh, di di uh, it has to be treated by uh, by different by different mean uh, as a result of walking, uh, there is an hypertrophy of the FHL. Yes, often. Then, uh, what is the, there is no, actually there is no dorsiflexion at all. Therefore, there is a disease atrophy of the dorsiflexors will be there. So, uh, I the, um, the, the hypertrophy, it's one of the most uh, uh, cause of the functional allux limitus with the distal uh, musculotendinous junction. Now, during gait, normally the, 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 the dorsal flexion of the foot and the toes are done passively. So, 
during stance, there is no activity on the on the on the dorsal uh, or, or the anterior um, uh, on the tibialis anterior or on the extensor of the uh, the toes. So I don't observe any uh, hypertrophy of these muscles. This is atrophy of the dorsiflexors. Maybe yes, maybe or. Because of also at heel strike you have you have the locked uh, subtalar joint you have also some uh, over constraints on the on the peroneus uh, tendon and uh, muscles so because of the fatigue to 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 try to compensate this uh, in uh, in a version of the foot mm -hmm. inversion of the foot okay thank you. Okay. Oh.